to meet yet. I am Patrick. I'm the pastor here at Evergreen Presbyterian Church, and I'm glad y'all are here on this very unique holiday weekend where we have puppies in worship. <laughs> um, as we prepare for worship, I invite you to hear these words from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of God. And I say again, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. <laughs> And here we are, gathered as a community of faith, and I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we bring in the light together. Come, come and worship, you who woke early and you who slept late, you who come often and you who don't, whether you live around the corner or in another county, or whether you've come from somewhere in between. There is room for all of us in God's neighborhood and more than enough love to go around. I invite you to join us in our opening hymn, number 404. What is this place? <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. We're going to start with our Flourish language. Can you read, read along with me here if you're ready? Flourish, alone and together. We practice wholehearted life alone and together. Evergreen is an open and affirming faith community rooted in the ways of Jesus. We grow through spiritual practices that nourish the individual and cultivate a more compassion. And I'm getting texts as I'm reading this in my side. I was wondering if my dog kids will got cold feet with me. I guess they're chilling. I named one of them Stacks. He's sleeping. Oh, I don't know whose name this is. Well, good morning, everybody. And good morning. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, Mr. Matthew and Miss Betty. Good morning. Good morning. Now, he said it's over. He don't miss too much going on. He doesn't want this. Now, guys, I have I have a question. Do you guys, do you guys, hey, it's me. You know what this is? What is this? What, what might this be? What is it? A who? A bullets and board. Okay, all boats, all boats. Mm -hmm. What might it be? A picture frame. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about you guys out there? What might this be? Mm -hmm. You, right there. Me? Yes. What's your name? Piper. Piper. Hey, Piper. How are you doing? Good. 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 What do you think this is? A certificate. A certificate. Is this a certificate, guys? Yes, it is a certificate, right? You can hold it very carefully, okay? Very carefully. Now, guys, that is a certificate of ordination for Pastor Patrick, right? Now, what is this? You guys know what this is? You know what this is? A certificate. It's kind of a certificate. You know what kind of, of a certificate it is? I got it last week, this week, as a matter of fact. You can look at it. I know, bummer. Y'all know what kind of certificate that is, right? How many of y'all got that kind of certificate before? Right? Raise your hands. Guys, you never want to get that kind of a certificate, right? That is a ticket. It's a ticket from the police, right? I was speeding. I was talking to my dad, right? I was on the phone. I was actually going like 50 and a 40. Didn't realize. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, guys, that sometimes we actually get rewards and sometimes we get um, punishments for things that we didn't mean to do, you know, that are kind of bad, right? But if we ask God for forgiveness, he always forgives us, right? He always shares us love, right? There was this... There was this son. They call him the prodigal son. And he took all of his dad's money. He asked basically, basically asked for all of his dad's money. And he ran away. He abandoned his whole family, right? That's not something you do. You don't leave your family, right? Especially if they gave you some money. You you love them, right? Not even about the money, it's just you love them, right? But he ran away from the family and the money ran out. What do you do when your money runs out? You call your mom. Well, you'll know when you get in college. You call your mom. You call your dad. <laughs> Trust me. That's what you're going to do. Call them, okay? Now, your mom and dad, be ready, all right? But he called them, and he didn't know if his dad was going to answer because he took the money, all right? But the dad loved him. He embraced him. And that's the same way that God loves us. Even when we do something that we know we're not supposed to do, something bad, like when I was speeding and I got a ticket, God still forgave me for that. Now, I'm gonna see if you guys tell me yourself. What's something that you know you might have not supposed to done this week? Hmm. <laughs> uh oh. <clears throat> maybe you, maybe, because I know you're in school right now, right? I used to talk a lot. Like, I talked a lot in school. <laughs> <laughs> what you, you mm -hmm. 
Ooh. <laughs> what is your bedtime? Is it eight o'clock? Because that's my bedtime. Uh, okay. Mine is eight o'clock on the dot. If listen, y'all have anything? Y'all didn't do. I know y'all were perfect. Y'all didn't do. Y'all didn't do anything. So all right. Y'all are great kids. Y'all took the trash out. Y'all did your homework. Y'all went to bed on time. Y'all brushed your teeth. What? I wish my mom thought that when I was your age. Yeah, I tell <laughs> that That's me. I was doing the same thing, except mine was a PlayStation. I always wanted to play the PlayStation. So my mom would just come and take it out of my room. <laughs> all right. Let's go back over and play with these cups, guys. Thank y'all so much. Sorry, I had to tell y'all selves. I won't make y'all get it. They're probably not gonna be my friends now. <laughs> Before we uh, get to our sacred reading for today, let's share a word of prayer. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you open our hearts and our minds so that we might hear what your spirit is saying to the church this day. Amen. Our reading comes from Luke's gospel, chapter 15, verses 31 and 32. Let's hear what the spirit is saying to us. Then the father said to his eldest son, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Amen. So we are in a uh, series called Love Thy Neighborhood. As you can see behind me. And we're looking at different uh, things, different uh, ways that God is calling us to experience and to live and to embody discipleship within our neighborhood, both the neighborhood here where this church is planted and our neighborhoods where we live. I know some of you that's one and the same, but for some of us it's, it might not be. So today we're going to talk about fun in the neighborhood. I mean, we have puppies here after all. <laughs> Fun in the neighborhood, the point that sometimes, and I think churches don't always, some churches do, some churches don't, churches don't always do a good job of, of, of showing that God calls us to party and have fun. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Keith was the loudest amen. <laughs> so when I, when I was in college, I, um, I worked at this church, First Presbyterian Church in Auburn, Alabama. Um, it's a pretty good sized church, and we had uh, three pastors at the time when I was there. There was Frank, and there was Lisa, and they were Rachel, and there was Rachel. Those three pastors, and there was a family that was getting ready to move. And this family had uh, two moms and four little girls. It almost sounds like a joke as I'm getting ready to tell it, but two moms and three pastors and the four little girls. Um, <laughs> so the pastors go over to the family's home like a week before they all leave, just to kind of do one big farewell dinner together. And they're sitting down with the family. And of course, you know, there's dinner and, and a lot of it's kind of wrangling the kids. Because I think the oldest was like 11. And then they kind of went, I'm terrible at aging kids' ages. They kind of went down from that. Um, and then it's the kids' bedtime, uh, probably about 8 o'clock, as Mr. Corey was alluding to. And so uh, the kids go to bed. And the pastors and the moms just stay up. And they're chatting. And they have dessert. And they have coffee and a little more wine. And they're getting a little loud. And the oldest girl, who's 11, she marches down the hallway from her bedroom. And she says, and she goes, you know, hands on her hips. She says, excuse me, you're too loud. What are you talking about? And they all said, we're just talking about church. And she says, and now you're lying. <laughs> and they said, why would we lie? And she says, because there's nothing fun about church. <laughs> and... <laughs> I fear that sometimes that's the picture we paint in life, and especially with kids, is that there's just not a lot of fun. But thankfully, I don't think that's the case at Evergreen. And thankfully, I believe that Matthew and Betty would certainly believe that church can be fun. But for some of us, that's not always the case. And it's not just for folks who attend church or decide not to attend church. Even for those of us uh, like Pastor Beatrix and myself, those of us who uh, do church stuff for uh, a career, there was um, a time when I was in seminary when there was the, uh, I can't remember his name, uh, Reverend Dr. Joseph. He was the 
He, he was before uh, Reverend Dr. Warnock at Ebenezer Baptist in Atlanta. He was Joseph Roberts, Jr. That's it. Reverend Joseph Roberts, Jr. He was about 30 years the pastor of the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, Ebenezer, Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. That's the church that Martin Luther King, Jr. came from. And so he was preaching at chapel at my seminary, Columbia Seminary in Atlanta. And I'll never forget this opening story he tells where he said, there was a, um, a woman who goes and knocks on the door of her son on a Sunday morning, early Sunday morning. And she says, son, it's time to get up. You got to go to church. And he says, no, I don't want to go to church. I'm not getting up. I'm not going to church. She says, no, come on. It's time. It's time. Church starts at 11 and it is already nine o'clock. You've got to eat your breakfast. Yet. Come on, get up. Let's go. She says, no, I'm not coming. She says, fine. I'm going to come back in 10 minutes. You better be up. She goes in. She comes back. She knocks on the door. She says, it's been 10 minutes. Why aren't you up? We got to go to church. He says, I'm not going to church. She says, all right, I'm going to give you five minutes. And then I'm going to come back. And you better be up and ready to go to church. Give him five minutes. She comes back, knocks on the door. She says, come on, get up. Time to go to church. She says, I'm not going. I'm not going. Give me, give me one good reason to go. And she said, so I'm going to give you two reasons. Number one, I drove over here to your apartment. And you're 42 years old. <laughs> And the second reason is you're the pastor of that church. <laughs> so you are going to church. So believe it or not, there are days. There are days where even those of us that wear these stoles are thinking, just 10 more minutes, just five more minutes. Do I have to get up and do that today? But again, thankfully, this community is one where it is a lot of joy and a lot of fun to be present with you all and to be, uh, I still, I honestly do pinch myself that I get to do this for a living. It's kind of absurd. <laughs> but um, we don't always find enough room for fun and joy and celebration in our church life. And sometimes there's good reason for that. There is a lot of trouble in the world. There's a lot going on that we are called uh, to respond to. There's a lot going on in terms of work for peace and justice and love and compassion in our communities. And there are sad things in life. There are things that break our hearts where we aren't in the mood to have fun and joy and to party. So it's understandable. And we have times when we recognize, you know, we haven't really celebrated as a community of faith in a while. We haven't really had fun or made time for partying in our community in a while. But God calls, it, calls us to this anyway. I, I think about some of the work that Evergreen has done, even with two years of a pandemic, even with staff transitions, whether it was me uh, coming on board, the Tifa coming on board, uh, Catherine now, we're gonna talk a little bit, about, oh, now you've moved. Um, <laughs> Catherine coming on board is our new interim director of music ministry, which we'll hear a little more about here in a bit. Um, even with these transitions, even with losing people that we love, even with a world that we fear is spinning out of control, this community has still made room to have fun and have joy and have parties, right? I think about some of our beer and hymns that have been a whole lot of fun. I think about our benefit concert just last month. It was a whole lot of fun. I think about the tradition of the impromptu Christmas pageant that is a lot of fun. I think about Palm Sunday where we do our little parade up to the park with the Mighty Souls Brass Band, second line style. That's a lot of fun. What else do we have? I'm putting you on the spot. What else do we do at Evergreen? It's a lot of fun. Draw during church. Draw during church. That is a lot of fun. Play with puppies in church. That's a lot of fun. What else? Throw concerts. Throw concerts. That's a lot of fun. Pride. I didn't say pride. No, nope. participation of pride. That is a lot of fun. We fight for justice. We fight for justice. There is this um. There's a scene in, uh, I didn't think about quoting this, so I've got to see if I can remember. There's a scene in, uh, I don't know if it's in the book, but I know it's in the movie, uh, it's one of the Harry Potter movies. Uh, part one of the Deathly Hollows, I think. And, and, and Harry and Ginny are getting ready for this wedding and everything, like the world seems to be spinning out of control, kind of like it is in, in our world now. And, um, and Ginny says, doesn't it seem a little weird to have a wedding with everything going on? And Harry has this great line of like, maybe that's the exact reason to have a wedding because of everything that's going on. And I think that's what we see a little bit in the story of the prodigal son. We see a glimpse of, of a God who says, 
we do not have fun and joy and celebration of parties to avoid what's happening. We don't do it because we want to stick our head in the ground and just have a break and distract ourselves from the world. We do it because of what's happening. We have our joy and our celebration and our parties as an act of resistance. There is this congregation in New York City called um, Middle Collegiate Church and their senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis is one of my like all-time favorite people. She's a phenomenal writer, speaker, et cetera. Um, and they had just posted something from last Sunday. This is a church, I mean, it's a big church, beautiful historic church. She came and I got to go and worship there a while back. Yeah, and it burned down. And so now they are in this like, you know, makeshift spot where they're trying to have worship and trying to do something, you know, do what they usually do with this big church and all the different musical things that they do. And they had this great post on their social media last week and said, the only thing better than joy in church is more joy. <laughs> and they had all this incredible music from their choir and their bands, and it was just phenomenal. And I love how Jackie always talks about joy as an incredible act of resistance, as joy and partying and celebration and community is a great act of resistance to those things in our world that only offer death and decay and destruction, that's showing that community can come together and showing that we can share food and that we can laugh together and have fun. That is an incredible act of resistance to the powers and principalities that want to tear us apart and tear us down. And that is something that we see in this story of the prodigal son. This, this story is one that can be looked at so many ways. And honestly, I've always thought about it with the parable right before it. Jesus tells a parable of a woman in a lost coin and we assume that, and, and it feels pretty obvious that Jesus is kind of doing this metaphor for God, that in the story of the woman with the lost coin, there's a woman who loses a coin, she searches everywhere until she finds it, right? And that's this whole metaphor of like, God will, 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 will you know, always be where you are and always searching you and seeking you. The story of the prodigal son is the son that goes and the younger son that uh, asks for his inheritance, which is essentially like saying, dad, I wish you were dead. Just give me my stuff, right? I mean, it was very painful. It's a very disruptive, painful thing that happens with the family. Son runs off, squanders it all, and then uh, loses everything and says, okay, I'm going to go back home now. And then in that story, God is the father who says, you know, you were lost, but now you're found. And if you read the uh, theology textbooks, they're always arguing about like, Oh, is God one like the woman who searches and searches and searches and keeps going to you? Or is God like the father who sits and waits for you to come back? Like, who has the agency? Does God move after you or do you have to move toward God? Blah, blah. We get in all that stuff. We get in all those. Are, and those are all like good questions and good conversations. But what I love is at the heart of the story of the prodigal son, there's a party. We forgive that. But there is this picture painted of a God who said, there is now community. There is now something to celebrate. Let's have a party. And I think there is so much happening. And I think about just, for example, uh, what Micah did with all the postcards um, and all the, the texts that people, so was it some, how many thousand text messages did he sent out for voting? Like it was some crazy. 26,000. Yeah. I mean, just something insane. We got to take time to celebrate. We gotta have time to say, you know what? Good things are happening. Let's have a party, right? And I think we are in a great position this fall. I think about some of the things that Evergreen is looking to do. I think we are in a great position to not only do great justice work in this community, but also have a time to celebrate it and to party together and to share meals and to share laughter. And that is exactly the God that we see in the prodigal son is a God that says there is now forgiveness, there is reconciliation, there is community, there is something to celebrate, let's have a party. There is room for fun in the neighborhood. I think about um, this one particular community that's rather strange called the Icon Community in Belfast, Ireland. Um, my first introduction to this was this book, how not to speak of God, and not is in uh, parentheses because this writer's all trendy like that. Um, was named Peter Rollins. If you read his stuff, it'll put you to sleep or give you a headache because it's just so dense. He's got a PhD in like social, no, scholastic philosophy and an MA in political theory and criticism, and a PhD and other PhD in postmodern theory. Yeah, I mean, it's all that kind of stuff. But if you listen to, if you look up on YouTube, he is hilarious. Not only is his, and you get that Belfast accent, sing songy accent, it's a lot of fun. He is a hilarious person. He's got a great personality. I got to meet him a few times during my year in Belfast. But he started this community along with some other folks called Icon Community. And they meet at a pub called Filthy McNasty's in Belfast. 
And uh, if, if you don't, if you don't know a lot about Northern Ireland, it's very divided between Protestants and Catholics. And some of that is religious. Most of it is political, like it usually is with violent conflict around the world. The Protestants want to be part of the United Kingdom. Uh, the Catholics want to be part of Republic of Ireland. It's, it's far more political than it is actually religious ideology. But that is a city where the schools are still mostly separate and there are peace walls that divide the communities. And the religious part does play a role in this. And so this is a community that goes to this pub of all places. And against the backdrop of a more conservative theological um, culture, whether you're Protestant or Catholic. And so the thought of like doing any Jesus stuff in a pub is just, you know, terrifying. And um, the icon community goes to this pub and they have this beautiful liturgy and they have music and they share poetry and they share reflections. And it's a lot of fun. I got to go a few times, I usually do it on Sunday nights. But here's some of the things that they do that I think uh, do not avoid some of the pain in their neighborhoods in Belfast, but actually respond to it with great joy and celebration. One of the things is um, membership cards. Um, there was a thing, uh, you know, some churches love to have like a card of your membership. You finally become a member, you've got your own little card. I'm a member. So they have membership cards that say, I am not a member of ICON. Like, because he said, all these people are so anti, they need cards that prove, like, no, I just go sometimes. I am not a member. I'm not to be fully affiliated with these people. So they have those. There's a big thing. I don't know if, it made it, if it's big in the States or not. The Alpha course was a big thing in the UK. Like, if you're going to join a church, if you're going to enter Christianity, you take the Alpha course. So they offer an Omega Coke course if you're going to leave Christianity, <laughs> get out of you know, toxic religion. They uh, have an evangelism team that goes to churches to be evangelized too. <laughs> they show up and they say, okay, tell us what you believe. Go ahead and evangelize to us. You know? And they, it's really an effort to create some good dialogue and conversation. Um, they also have a group called The Last Supper, which meets in an upstairs room at the pub where they invite someone of... Um, a public influence, like a, like a politician or community leader to come and have dinner with them. And they say, if we don't like what you say, it's your last supper. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's one thing that they do once a month. Um, it, it, is, it is just, it is a community that has said, you know, we're going to be ridiculous and silly and funny, but all of it has deep meaning, right? Like on the surface, it just looks a little ridiculous. And it just looks like people laughing and getting together at the pub. But when you really look at what they're doing and how they're thinking and how they're talking, and the kind of sharing that's happening at this pub, um, you know, among the laughter and cigarette smoke, you realize that there is something deeper happening. They're not trying to avoid the pain in the neighborhood. Their fun in the neighborhood is an a direct act, act of resistance. And I think that is what we see a little bit in the story of the prodigal son. We see a God who parties and who throws a party for us. So again, it's not a fun, the fun that we're called to in the neighborhood is not a fun that we use to avoid what's going on in the world. It is direct resistance to the division and the hate and the pain that swirls around us. We worship and are created by a God who parties, a God who rejoices when we come back, a God who sets out a feast for us as we seek justice and seek to love one another. A God who pops open champagne when new friends show up. And a God that we find a home in. A God whose love is always there, whose grace is ever present. A God who celebrates who we are created and called to be. We are called to have fun. And it's important that we live like it. In the name of the triune God of faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. So um, we just last week got to fully pass the peace uh, with one another because we've been doing it with COVID precautions with just peace signs and waves and little like blinky eye, you know, whatever that looked a little scary, but you know, like um, you know, Morse code with your eyes. I don't know if that's a thing, um, but we are back to, uh, as, as last week became, uh, mass became optional. Um, we are back to offering peace to one another uh, with handshakes, fist bumps, elbow bumps. What we do ask is that you read the signs. Different people are comfortable with different things for all sorts of different reasons. So as you pass the peace to one another, look at, uh, just kind of get the vibe from your neighbor and, and the consent. Do they want a hug? Do they want an elbow? Do they want a fist bump, a handshake, a high five, whatever they're comfortable with? So just use a little extra care as we pass the peace to one another. Friends, our peace comes from knowing how much God loves us. And with God's help, we try to love and forgive one another as Christ loves and forgives us. The peace of Christ be with you.
So please pass the peace to your neighbors. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just also precious. <laughs> oh, he's taking uh, Mr. Hayes, Mr. Isaac Hayes. Oh, oh is that the, uh, is that Black and Fancy? Renamed Stacks. Stacks. Okay, and, and Beatrix already has one named Kaz now. <laughs> Thanks to you guys for doing that. Okay, well, anyway, I have... The announcements and um, today is the first Sunday for Catherine, our new interim music director. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. We're glad she's here. And if you're interested in giving a meal to uh, Newkirk Memphis, that's the local Presbyterian uh, campus uh, deal on Thursday night. We have a digital sign up that's in our, uh, our, in our Evergreen newsletter or talk to Patrick over here. He might know something about that. I think he's already hit them up for puppies. And <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. And thanks to Beverly for uh, the hospitality cabinet back in the uh, kitchen. Yeah, uh, that's uh, we already have some food ready in there to give away to people that are needing food or toiletries as, as they walk in uh, from the street. And it's it's a good uh, it's a good deal. And beginning in October, yay, we're bringing coffee coffee back. And all the goodies that come with it. And so, uh, if you're interested in uh, and helping along with this, uh, talk to Patrick or Latifa or just you know or just bring it whatever. And uh, and also, while we're asking for help uh, for Corey in the kids' room, we have a digital sign up or just talk to Mr. Corey and get that going. Also, we have uh, the MICA core. Uh, anyone interested in joining the MICA core team, talk to CK. And uh, you can go to work. MICA stands, if you're not familiar with it, MICA stands for the uh, Memphis Interfaith Coalition for Action and Open Evergreen is a uh, founding partner. We're going to call it founding partner. We're just a partner uh, with Micah, and they do a lot of great work in the city here. And uh, just kind of, you know, we're kind of a small group here. It's not like we can go out and change Memphis overnight, but when you combine us with a whole lot of other churches, yeah. And I would just add that this is a very exciting time to be part of Micah. Um, Micah has made moves. Take some credit for the uh, elections that recently happened. Yay. Thank you very much. So, anyway, this is a, a great time to jump in at the uh, emergence of the Micah era in Memphis, right? Yes, new co-delegate. <laughs> 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 We're lucky all you're looking for is a few good courtesy members. All right. Okay, uh, if you're visiting with us, everybody's got the ways to get in contact with us. Um, we are, uh, want you to be able to keep up with all the happenings here. Feel free to fill out a contact card as if that will be in the plate that's coming around. And if you're joining us on Zoom, uh, then there's a virtual uh, connect card that will be dropped into the chat. And if you'd like to contribute financially, there are ways to do that. Um, uh, let's see, what else I can't find my name. There's a text info in the bulletin. That's what I was trying to think. Anyway, we appreciate it. Now we get past. It's in dying, let me know. 
to eternal life. Until y'all are tempted to clap, go ahead and clap. <laughs> Before our offertory prayer, I just want to make sure that I, uh, I let folks know that in, in honor of Catherine starting as our interim director of music ministries, there will be a reception following worship next Sunday uh, to officially kind of welcome her and, and celebrate her and the work that God's going to be doing through her in this community. Let's pray. Gracious God, for the gifts that we have that we can share, those that are our time and our talents, our energy, our enthusiasm, or our resources. We give you thanks, and we pray that what we offer goes to your dreams for this world. In your many names we pray. Amen. Our communion hymn is Come to the Table of Grace. It's number 507 in the purple hymnal. Um, and we're going to do verses one, two, and three. So grace, peace, and love. Please rise as you're able in body or spirit. Thank you. 
Amen. Please be seated. Friends, my name is Beatrix Weil. I am the parish associate pastor here at Evergreen and the chaplain actually on theme. Friends, this is the joyful feast for all of us. Christ has gathered his people around the earth to commune at this table. And across the various lines that we draw in the sand to divide ourselves and through the walls we build up in places of powerfully protected affluence and among those who are exploited and oppressed, God's spirit is present. We are called to share a meal, remembering and celebrating the one who proved peace, hope, justice, and transformation possible. And so come, you from east and you from west, from the north and from the south. Come, you from this neighborhood and from neighborhoods far away. Come. Come with your doubts. Come with your hopes. Come with your dreams. Come with your inadequacies and come with your strengths. Come, for this is the table where all are invited and all are welcome. As we prepare to share this holy meal, we also share our prayers with God and with one another. So our prayers of the people, how, how we've been doing them for a little bit here. Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup saying, this cup is the cup of the new covenant. Sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. You proclaim the good news, the good, good news of the covenant. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pastor Beatrix and I will each um, take one of these baskets to pass around if you'd like uh, and just pass to one another. Uh, if you'd like to partake of this celebration, uh, there is a corn tortilla that is gluten-free and nut-free and dairy-free for uh, to hit any of your preferences and requirements. And then there is a grape. Um, and of course, this is all in uh, you know, our COVID precautions. Um, and then hold on to the elements and we will all celebrate uh, sharing them together when everyone has, who wishes to um, partake has had one. Friends, let us taste and see that heaven is good.
this tortilla, the bread of heaven for you. And this grape, the cup of salvation for you. There will be a basket where you can place your cups on your way out in the back. Let us share a word of prayer. Foolish, foolish God, your belly laugh echoes through the world. We have responded to your invitation to join in the banquet. Here we have eaten, we have drunk, we have tasted your goodness. May the joy we find in this meal together lift up our hearts. May we carry your laughter to the world around us. May we live out that foolishness called love wherever and everywhere we go. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 542. place go knowing that in the waters of baptism you are you are called my beloved you have been created in love the source of that love continues to guide you continues to guide you to places where you can throw a party where your joy and the fun that you have can be resistant to all of the pain in the world and that in the party and in the joy and in the fun we might just find wholeness and healing Go in peace. Amen. Amen.